glorify you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our refuge. Thank you for being our shelter. Thank you for being our helper. Lito sambre kende kriado langrie konte prekedia ante brukende krimborodo reveke te bria konde brika lebre kunda baratale. Thank you, faithful God. Blessed be your holy name. I bless and I worship you. I glorify your holy name. Thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to sing. We're going to worship God with one song quickly. Casting crown. But before we do that. I'd like you to take this prayer. If you're tired. Please sit down. I know you've been standing in here. You can sit down. Let's read from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 21, verse 11 and 12. Isaiah 21, 11 and 12. Sit down a minute, so let's read that so we can pray. We're going to rise up to, together and pray. I want to do this prayer so I don't preach and at the end I don't pray this prayer. It's very important. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Before you pray, before we do this prayer, can you lift your right hand where you are? I'd like you to cry out to God, Lord, have mercy on, uh, have mercy on the human race and oh God send answers to the people of Italy they have cried out to you the president of uh, is it Zambia or Zimbabwe is it Zambia or Zimbabwe the one that Zambia the president of Zambia went to the mountain to pray he said we will not close down church now, some people may think it's not wise, but oh God, don't let his faith fail. Use his faith as a message to the kings of the earth. Oh God, oh God, have respect to the faith of your son and let your power preserve people in Zambia. Oh God, arise. The president of this nation called for a day of prayer and fasting. Oh God, remember the prime minister of Italy has called upon God. We want to pray. Oh God, remember every head of the nation that has called upon you. Arise, arise and answer them so that the hidden nations will know that you are our God, open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to ask God for mercy upon the nations of the earth. Have mercy upon the nations of the earth. La beto sampata. Have mercy upon the nations of the earth. Have mercy, O oh God. Arise and defend the men and the women that called upon your name. Arise and defend the nation of Zambia. Arise and defend and send solution to the nation of Italy. Oh Lord, send answers to North America. Raise men and women anointed by you. Anointed by you. Zephyr Corporation. Mother Duke Beto. He Zephyr Corporation. Into Zebra Kente, Libra Kento Brekeliato, Masikele Tala, Oh God arise, Oh God arise, Inamo Supara, Lafe Suprake, Likaporante Cabo, Oh God arise, have mercy upon the human race. We cast the roots of coronavirus and we command it to disappear it's already cursed now demons of coronavirus lose your grip off of the human race lose your grip off of the human race Libre kende de te kabu, rabe ten kere brate, randiko sondo brekenia, makitanta, 
Mandeke ndeketia Mandike tobra Lefre kosembara Livre sugabaladaya Arise Have mercy Upon the human race Livre kuba bretanaya Have mercy upon Zambia Have mercy O God Upon Italy They are looking up to you Answer them In Jesus Mighty name We have prayed Amen Now let's read from Isaiah chapter 21 Let's read from the ERV translation Please ERV translation Verse 12 and 13 Verse 11 and 12 sorry Please if you are watching I want you to pay attention because Bori mala in to zavra kale bala yada there are certain things you only know by revelation. Sometimes, if you're too deep on all theological differences, you will miss God. Understand the simple things that God reveals that brings great solution to the human race. I'd like us to read this verse, very important. Let's read one to go. This is a message about Doma, pay attention. There's someone calling to, there's someone calling to me from Seir. I'm not going to break down all of that because that's not the focus of my message. I just want to bring a prayer point out of it. There's someone calling to me from Seir. God, God here represents watchman. God here represents what we're all called to be watchmen. If you understand your calling, you will understand that you are called to be a watchman. A watchman has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with spiritual office. The acceptance of a spiritual office to be able to stand at the gates in the spirit realm representing the human race or representing your constituency representing the territory God has called you to legislate on their behalf. Are you with me? So a watchman is an office. And the scripture says it is the responsibility of watchmen to pray until the destinies of their cities and nations become what God wants it to be. And what does God want the nations to be? He wants every nation to bring him praise he said, until Jerusalem becomes a praise in the earth. So God is saying, has watchmen uh, be listening out for the crying voice. There is a call from Seir. There is a call from Seir. Uh, I don't want to talk about what Seir represents because it's going to take me out of my message today. But there is a call from Seir. And he said, the call didn't come to the king. The call didn't go to the laymen. The call didn't go to regular sinners or drunkards or politicians. The call from seer went directly to the God. He said, you are the God. You are the watchman. You are expected to know what's going on in the spirit realm. I've been anointing the eyes of people. Seven weeks I've anointed the eyes so you don't miss what God has for you two years from today. I've anointed. So, so watchmen are, are supposed to see. The guards are supposed to be there to protect, to reveal, to see ahead, look ahead, see ahead, and help the ordinary people avoid being a casualty when, especially when an when a sudden enemy shows up without announcing itself. So he said, God, how much of the night is left? Night represents darkness, confusion. Night represents despair, despondency, deprivation, stagnation. Night represents the current situation that the nations of the earth seems to be going through. He said, how much of the night is left? Oh, dear people of God, it's important to know that people want to know how much is left of the coronavirus. How much is left 
of the predicament how much is left in other words uh, uh, we are becoming too restless of, of being quarantined and there are people that say well thank God this quarantine is enabling me to get closer to God but you know yourself that you have been struggling you lack the discipline to get close to God and that's the truth uh, because if you actually have the discipline God will never have needed to quarantine you to get your attention I know many people will accept that oh hallelujah finally it's, it's a good thing it's good and I'm not de denying the fact as a matter of fact my spiritual father did a very good teaching on that and he gave specific things to do during this season but the fact remains that uh, God sent the Israelites out for 70 years to 70 years of captivity why? because they failed to do what they naturally should have done six years walk the land seventh year let the land rest so they failed for all these years so God calculated he said well finally you're going to go into captivity so the land will rest for seven years so they were quarantined why? it was never God's will if you don't do what you ought to do now you will be forced to do it later it's never God's will to lead you by force. It's never God's will to lead you with the rod. It is his will to lead you with his love. He would rather guide you, build you with his love. He's a loving father. So he either leads you, builds you with his love. So you can either learn by choice or by force. But either way, you realize that many people don't have the discipline required to focus on spirituality. This is the time many marriages will fail. Because many marriages have been built what? On a sand, the sinking sand. Husband wakes up in the morning, goes to work early, wife goes to work, and they barely see each other. They see each other for how many minutes? Two, three hours a day. If you see each other for two, three hours a day, you can't tell me you have a successful marriage. That's not a successful marriage. As a matter of fact, you might just be patching. But now is the time that husbands and wives will now spend seven hours God help you. <laughs> God help you if that marriage has been built on fakeness or you have failed to address important issues. So I think the first thing you're going to do to learn this time is that your marriage needs attention. Now you're going to see all oh, your wife all the time, your husband all the time. And... Uh, this is the time you see the things they do that begin to irritate you. But instead of you getting angry and breaking the marriage, you know what? I'm done with you. No. Believe that God wants to heal your home. And, but in order to heal, he has to reveal. God will reveal the wound. Then he will heal your wound. But this is also the time parents, grandchildren will be with you. Children will be with you. This is the time your test for your children, your love for your children will be tested. Because now you will see everything your children's teachers have to put up with. <laughs> your, now you will see all the things that your children's teachers have to put up with. They've been putting up with a whole lot. And when they come back home, what did the teacher do? And some people, I'm telling you, some parents, I don't want to say you disgust me, but you really disgust me because you don't know how hard teachers work. As a preacher, as an apostle, as a teacher and as a leader, I'm telling you, you don't know how hard teachers work to keep the attention of children. Now, some of these parents, you can't even keep your children's attention for two hours. Especially during school time. Because they are restless. They are not used to certain things. Now, you have to put up with all of this. And that's why God will give you wisdom. Don't allow all of this to break you down. But unfortunately, it's only a desire and a prayer. It's still going to break some people down. 
marriages will fail now because people are going to face reality. People are going to fight each other. If they don't come to Jesus and build on the solid rock, guess what will happen? They won't be able to sustain what they think they have. So they will break apart, fall apart, and wreck themselves. And that's where believers are called to be the shining and a burning light. This is where you begin to talk to your unbeliever friends. And when they call you say, I don't know how to handle my wife. You say, listen, be patient with her. I don't know what to do with my husband. Listen, be patient with him. Now, I'm not accommodating any form of physical abuse or mental abuse. But I'm saying that there's going to be all kinds of disruption. If it has not happened yet. This is a time many people will discover that financially they have worked for 22 years and they have nothing to show because their heart is keeping. They don't know where to generate money to pay the next bill. But I want you to know if you are in any of such situation, God is coming to your rescue. I say God is coming to your rescue. And so the man, the voice, the cry that came from Seir was asking the God, the watchman, the prophet, the one who is supposed to have access to the spirit world. Asking the man, he said, God, how much is the night? How much of the night is left? How long are we going to go through this thing? Sometimes we can, sometimes we can, we can go through things if only we know how long we have to put up with it. If we know when it's Omega, we know the Alpha, we've seen the beginning. When is Omega? When is, going, when is it going to end? If we know when it's going to end, then we'll try to put up with it. Watch man, how much of the night is left. I know they said there's always light at the end of the tunnel. When will I see the light? I'm looking, and when the president is saying, we will break out before uh, Christmas, before Easter, others are saying, we don't see the light. We don't see anything coming. We might remain in this until after August, until November, until some are said, the only time they see real things coming is around September. Some said August, some said whatever they said. But the point is, watch man, what do you see? You see, most people ask watchmen these kind of questions simply because they just want to know when they will come out of this calamity. That's the wrong reason to ask. It's okay to ask when you will come out. But let me tell you the main reason God wants you to ask such questions is so as to prepare yourself to avoid being taken by surprise next time. So the watchman that is truly watching will be able to give you an accurate answer. The watchman that watches will always have the right answer. Watchman, how long, how much of the night is left? When will we go back to living like normal? When are we going back? Don't please give me back. Give me the. When are we going back to living a normal life? When are we going back to having normal things? I love to creak, hold and shake and hug, but when am I going to be able to shake someone and not think I have contracted something? When will the night be over? What man? Tell me. My dearly beloved, the first thing I'm praying for you right now is that the spirit of a watchman will come upon you. Amen. I said will come upon you. Amen. Let the spirit of a watchman come upon you. Amen. I don't like my current sound. Work it out. Let me have the initial crispy sound I had. Thank you very much. God bless you. Let the spirit of a watchman come upon you. So you can accept the responsibility to be the God of 
over your spiritual constituency so you will understand what it takes and how to legislate on behalf of the human race I pray because God is about to set you apart from the crowd the crown is coming upon you and you can't be lost in the crowd so I pray that the spirit of a watchman will come upon you let the spirit of prayer come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ my wife watched me and she asked me a question today she was like she said I don't know it's like every time you just like to pray you are praying he said how do you enjoy prayer that I see you praying the way you pray how do you there is a spirit that when that spirit comes upon you you, you enjoy accepting the responsibility of legislating on behalf of the human race God kept saying to me he said call them to prayer call them and I told my people from January I said oh I told pastor I said, I said God said we should pray then we started praying again we were praying every Friday night but we started it with different fire Amen. God said call them to prayer and I have obeyed God everything he told me I obeyed him he said serve them communion I serve them communion he said call them to prayer and I call the people to prayer I served them communion last year against the virus coming and I call them to prayer this year Friday night we come here at night pray 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 so I'm telling you that we have done some things in the spirit realm but for me for me I enjoy praying because I have not just been given the burden for my generation I understand that I am a watchman, I am a guard I understand I am an executor I understand heaven is counting on me heaven is counting on me in such a time as this, anything we prepare to preach at the end of the day we have to still come back to addressing the current need of the human race. But I'm addressing this need and will be releasing upon you the spirit that will prepare you for what the needs that will arise in the future. Amen. This current need has made the government and leaders and intelligent people bankrupt. Yes. They are bankrupt of what scientific solution. You understand? Eventually they may find something because we are praying. The Lord said to me, pray that the same way I opened the eyes of Moses to see the tree needed to put in that bitter water to make it sweet yes. is the same way I'll open the eyes of scientists. And this is the best time for spiritual scientists to rise and begin to pray and ask God for real answers because God will get the glory from the answer to the virus. Amen. Amen. But then beyond this virus, the next thing that is hitting the earth will be something that right now believers are still strong and praying. The next thing that hits the earth will be something that will make it even almost impossible for God believing, tongue talking believers to pray. But the time will be shortened. Otherwise, even the very elect will fail. So the time will be shortened. But here's how Jesus handled things that were going to happen in the future. Yes. He prayed ahead of time. Are you with me? Yes, sir. He prayed and prepared. And one day he was praying until Elijah and Moses showed up and strengthened him and told him things that will come. So when things came, he was under pressure to give up on his assignment. He said, Lord, this is too hard. Take this cup away from me if it is your will. Um, no, no, no. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So because he prayed ahead of time, yes. the pressure was converted into power. Amen. Are you with me? So you are preparing ahead of time. And I'll tell you the three things that will happen to you in the course of this preparation. Let's, we continue. No, anyway, let me just drop that to you quickly. Number one thing that happens to you in, in the course of this preparation is that, number one, your spiritual eyes will be open. 
The reason I'm doing things with boldness, audacity, alacrity, and confidence is because I have seen this thing before coming. And my eyes are open. Every day I see things moving in the realm of the spirit. It's like graph. It's like if you have the app that shows you the market, the stock market. You can literally see how the stock market is doing per minute, per minute. So if you are into trading, it's easy for you to trade. You sit down, you watch the market. As soon as it goes down, you buy. As soon as it goes up, you sell. And then you pull out your money. And you continue that way. Is somebody saying amen? amen? So in the spirit, you are able to watch the spiritual graph. You are able to watch transactions, how things are happening. And so you want to be a God that sees. A watchman that sees. Number one, your eyes will open. Number two, your spiritual rating will be high. God will increase your spiritual rating. Every man on earth is rated by heaven. Angels rate you. God rates you. When God rated those ready for battle, 10,000 warriors who went out with who? With Gideon. God rated them. And the rest of them were sent back home. They weren't killed, but they were not enlisted. They were sent back home. Now, the, 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 the wrong thing that you don't want to happen to you is for God to look at you when you think that this is my time. And God looks, God says, yes, this is your time. But you have not passed the test and your rating is too low. If you join this next move, you will become a casualty. So instead of losing you and you spoiling what I'm doing, I'd like you to come back and join the crowd. Say the blood of Jesus. Say I'm a prophet, so I'm proclaiming the very heart of God. So your rating will increase. I say your rating will increase. If you're watching me, your rating will increase. The word of God says God looked at Daniel. And the angel said, Daniel, thou beloved of God. The angel came back another time and he said, Daniel, he said, for you are highly beloved. You are highly rated in the spirit realm. So because of your rating, the day you set your heart to pray, answers was given before you started praying. So you may not know what is going on, but God is rating you. Some of you, maybe a star has been added to your stars. Maybe all you have in the spirit is half star. Some of you, somehow by virtue of responding to prayer calls and all these things, you have become two stars. Some of you, by virtue of sacrifices of alignment, you become three stars. Some of you, God knows he can tap you at any hour of the night and you won't argue with him. You won't try to intellectually defame his ability to turn things around. So God said, now I'm getting you four stars. Some are three and a half stars. Some are four stars. Some of you, God looks and God says, Oh, I've tested you through all this season and period. And now I have made you what? A five star. Five star is the highest rating that mankind can give and mankind recognize. So God said, I'm going to take a few of you Alampo to Kotopa to another star that humans cannot rate. I don't know if God is speaking to you. You may not know it now, but when all of this is over, the next season of what will hit the end, you will see your ranking. I say you will see your ranking because some of you, God is saying, I am making you a seven star general. Some of you are becoming six stars general. I prophesy to you, your rating is the spirit world will increase in the name of Jesus. And the third thing that will happen 
when your rating increases, your authority expands. Your authority, your sphere of influence expands. God enlarges your territory so you can be in a city and you have authority and dominion over that city. But because your rating is high, you can be in a city and God gives you authority over the state. For some of you, as your rating increase, your territory expands, God then gives you authority and he gives you dominion over what? Not just the state, but over the nations. I said over the nations. Amen. 